Hello everybody, Brian Shannon here from alphatrends.net. Today's uh, Friday, the 12th of December, 2014. Let's look at this market. S&P lost uh, $3.30 today, bringing it down 1.6%, more than doubling uh, the loss for the week of 3.4%. And it's been a rough month for equities so far. And of course, oil, really the big loser, lost 12% this week and 38% uh, year to date. So we had a little bit of strength in gold this week uh, and also in the bonds. So let's take a look at the uh, damage and what's potentially ahead uh, for these markets. The S&P 500, let's Let's take a look. Uh, let's start with the 30-minute time frame. We lost the five-day moving average on Monday and made a pattern of lower highs and lower lows below that declining five-day moving average, and that's what kept us in alpha trends on the uh, strong defensive this week is because we were below a declining five-day moving average. And as I like to say, rallies in a downtrend can occur, but you should only look at them as day trade opportunities while we're below a declining five-day moving average. So we remain below that five-day moving average and here's where we lost it on uh, Monday. Uh, Tuesday, of course, we had that gap lower and then rally. But anyways, we finished right at the lows for the week, $200.87. And now we're within striking range of that 50-day moving average. Seems like a, uh, a given that it will, uh, in fact, be tested here. Let's back it up a little bit to uh, encompass this recent uh, entire rally that we've seen here because it's been a spectacular rally. And uh, we got... Uh, uh, Sorry, we uh, we got bullish on it right here as we were making that higher high above the rising five-day moving average. And now that we're making lower highs and lower lows below the declining five-day moving average, it's guilty till proven innocent on the intermediate term. Perhaps we're going to continue down to 198.5. That would be only a 38.2% retracement of this low for uh, October low to the recent high. So we've still possibly got some uh, room for flush out here. We are going into, you know, what's supposed to be a very positive uh, time of year but obviously only price pays and you can't be looking at seasonality and making your decisions uh, to, to buy something you want to make your buy decisions based on price action and price action for what you're trading you don't buy uh, the S&P 500 because something the dollar is doing or something that gold is doing or whatever you buy it based on what the S&P 500 is doing and right now there's no reason to be a buyer perhaps Monday we get a little bit of a bounce but for now uh, we're going to need to see this uh, five-day moving average come down, flatten out, and then see the market get back above it. That's going to take some time. So I would think that it'd be at least till Wednesday before we get a rally that uh, you know was would, would put us in a position to be in an intermediate term uptrend once again. Uh, a bounce certainly is not out of the question here, but again, there's no evidence of it. So uh, you can look at it and say, well, this prior resistance should become support, and it often often does become support, but there's no reason to be a buyer until we have actual evidence. So don't be one of the people who sticks your bid in at uh, the 50-day moving average of $200.21. Maybe that's where it finds its low, but you're better to be aware of where that 50-day moving average is and then look to the shorter term time frames to see if in fact there is evidence that the buyers are regaining control. And for today, uh, you know, it looked like maybe for a little bit we we're going to rally as we got above that uh, volume weighted average price. But we gave that up and obviously continued uh, back down to the lows of the day. Let's talk about oil for a moment. That's on everyone's mind here. So let's take a look at a chart uh, from uh, uh, for <clears throat> a recent chart here from, uh, you know, going back to June when we saw uh, oil peaking at about $107 a barrel. Here we are down at $57 a barrel, and there's no such thing as down too much. This is a trend. The trend is persisting, and I heard something recently. I forgot who to attribute it to, but you know the uh, you know OPEC is in in Saudi Arabia are saying that they're not going to uh, pump more oil, and someone was referring to uh, Saudi Arabia and OPEC as you know kind of view them as as the Federal Reserve for oil, and I thought that was a good way of uh, thinking about it. It. Um, anyways, let's take a look at the uh, longer term chart even. Where the heck uh, do I have that? Uh, this is, uh, well, you know, I'm going to have to go back to that one. Um, so let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ also, of course, finished lower on the week and below its uh, 10 and 20 day moving average. So, you know, oftentimes we look for support at a key moving average, such as the 20 day moving average. And on Monday, we came down to that level, tested, bounced a little bit. However, 
were even when we first tested that 20-day uh, moving average which was right about at this level we were below a declining five-day moving average and we got above the five-day moving average but the five-day moving average was still declining saying guilty till proven innocent and we are continuing lower here in the Nasdaq we could take a look at you know here's another thing to look at is the volume weighted average price since the uh, event that will get us to uh, $100.82 that's since the low the Fibonacci here if we were to take that and say just a 38.2 percent retracement will get us down uh, to close this gap right here and to trade down to $100.22 a share which is pretty close to where we have that 50-day moving average you see the 50-day moving average is one $100.68 so we still look like we have room to sell off in here and uh, it's guilty till proven innocent the, the Russell 2000 here has been in this uh, range for the last month with uh, important support uh, 114.25 to 114.50 we're down to the bottom end of that range on uh, on Wednesday we had a big reversal day in the Russell 2000 I think that the fact that that then failed the next day that it, it you know trapped a lot of buyers in there but what we're looking at in the Russell 2000 again 114 and a quarter to 115 is a it has been an important level of support uh, there's there's nothing here to indicate that it won't hold but there's nothing to indicate there you should be a buyer either because we are below a declining five-day moving average the uh, lower highs and lower lows are here as well and uh, you know if this level fails to hold then uh, I think you know certainly the 50-day moving average looks reasonable in this market it's uh, at 113.60 uh, if we take a look at Fibonacci here we can see that uh, a 38.2 percent retracement in this market gets us down towards about 113 so just in all of these markets you've just got to be very careful the uh, semiconductors still you know longer term still in a clear uptrend however that uptrend probably got a little bit ahead of itself I guess would be the the best argument but we became very cautious and, and defensive on this group uh, also this week because they lost the uh, five-day moving average and the five-day moving average then acted as resistance and from there we saw lower highs and lower lows so right now the sellers are in control of the semiconductors on the uh, intermediate term time frame and that occurred uh, of course we you know we saw that uptrend line from the October lows broken and if if we take a look at Fibonacci in here we can see that we've got a long way to go if we're gonna get a 38.2 percent retracement gets us down to 52 bucks and that $52 level was an important uh, level of resistance, 52 to 52 and a quarter. So perhaps we're headed there. I don't want to make a prediction, but as long as we have lower highs and lower lows and a declining five-day moving average, you have to look at this as it's just a dumb thing to do to, to purchase uh, while we have that. So don't make the mistakes of buying the pullbacks. Wait for the pullbacks to settle down and give us evidence that the buyers have actually regained control as they did. You're not, you're not going to pick the bottom uh, but you don't need to pick the bottom as, as we've been you know as I've been mentioning uh, for the S&P 500 this is where we became bullish in this market and now uh, becoming bearish over here so that's you know that's the proper way to look at the market by the way let's take a look at the volume weighted average price from the October low we can see that's right at about 199.97 is the level so kind of adding uh, a little bit more importance to that $200 level uh, and hopefully we see a, a little flush below 200 next week and perhaps it, it begins to bounce from there but again don't make the mistake of being a buyer early I'd rather be a little bit late and, and not pick the bottom but be safe and, and know that uh, I have the momentum in my favor um, so financials also of course lost some ground here this week and the uh, if we look at the 30 uh, the 30 minute time frame we had some resistance developing in here and we were looking that at this as more neutral that and if it got back above to uh, 2490 uh, that it could continue to move higher but of course what we saw instead was that uh, you know we broke down yesterday afternoon and then today we lost some support at $24.45. Uh, so that now here in this market as well, we've got guilty till proven innocent. Here's you know where we have the potential for some support. Uh, if we back that up actually to uh, a 130 minute chart and let me just add uh, let's take that back to about 100 days. Uh, you know we've got this prior uh, resistance 
which then became support over here. So that's you know 2395-ish. Uh, that's certainly a possibility of where this market could uh, be heading back down to the 50-day moving average at 2370. So, uh, but again, this this looks like it should become support, but that doesn't mean be a buyer there. Monitor that level to see if the actual evidence of buyers. Uh, do show up gold uh, again it was up this week and you know like I've been saying in gold I don't like to trade gold but this looks like a uh, you know as we've said from a failed breakdown comes a fast move higher I think they shook the buyers out and now if you're long gold I would say that your your stop last week we spoke about a stop should be going under this 112 level at this point I think probably at about 114 certainly to pull back a little bit would be uh, would be healthy for the uh, uh, for the gold uh, market but uh, it's you know I think that we we experienced a pretty good shakeout and now it's recovering from there let's take a look at some individual stocks Apple I've been avoiding this stock on the long side because it's been below that declining five-day moving average for the last two three weeks and it continues to be and, and if you look at it you can see that there are sellers that, that are waiting at that five-day moving average in Apple that's because people look at these moving averages and they tend to be a self-fulfilling prophecy to a degree Taking a look at the uh, Fibonacci here off of the October lows, we can see that uh, we're, we're just beyond that 38.2% uh, retracement right now. And uh, we've got uh, just below, we've got this prior Im important little band of uh, uh, resistance at about 10, uh, 109. Uh, and we've got the 50 day moving average at 10856. So perhaps we find some support in that area next week. But again, we're still below the declining five day moving average trying to pick the absolute turn point let let the institutions figure out where that's going to be uh, what we want to do is wait for the momentum to be in our favor before we decide to, to put our hard-earned uh, money at risk Alibaba was interesting this week because it came down uh, pretty pretty much precisely to the volume weighted average price since the IPO so if you recall we got bullish on the stock over here and as it broke below the five-day moving average and was making lower highs and lower lows we got defensive and now this week we see that Again, it touched the volume weighted average price from the IPO, found buyers there, and that's where we've seen the low so far this week. Now, I think for next week, uh, this little area in here, basically 107.5 to 108, here's a little band of resistance that if the stock can get back up toward, the ideal scenario would be to get up towards that level, pull back, create a higher low at maybe 107, and then to be able to break higher. If that's the case, then I think that the stock could uh, look like it's heading back up again. It's still probably a day or two early, and if that scenario were to unfold, I would say a worst case stop would go down at about 104 or so. GoPro also came down and tested its uh, volume weighted average price since the IPO, but didn't have as good success. We saw that it touched it on Wednesday, and and on Thursday it closed below it and today they got an upgrade but it sold off and you can see here it you know closed well below the volume weighted average price and right at the lows so anyone who bought on that gap today lost money the two-day volume weighted average price is right in this area but you know right now we see a declining five-day moving average and a stock making lower highs and lower lows so how however good this story is how many of her uh, you know cameras they sell over Christmas is over over ruled by the fact that the stock is in a downtrend currently it may try to find some support but it's going to be difficult for it to turn around with a declining 10 20 and 50 day moving average LinkedIn is trying to uh, find some support on its 50 day moving average you see the pattern here lower highs and lower lows and now it's looking like we've got a higher high so what we want to look for on the 30 minute time frame is maybe a pullback in here just slightly and I'd say you know you could you could air you, you could look for this stock to continue uh, to, to rally uh, with a stop I think at about 214 right now I, ideally we want to see that uh, tighten up I'd rather see a pullback create a higher low maybe at about 217 and then uh, to buy strength on it but right now it's you know it's broken the little downtrend line it's uh, well like it has it no it has not okay so um, anyways it, it looks like it's starting to set up for a potential upside next week so I'd say keep an eye on that speaking of persistence 
sense of trends IBM you know it's a good company I think you you'll find anyone to tell you that and when they gap down like this and then it turns sideways you know the trend is your friend uh, a lot of people were buying in here and today it completely co collapsed it's in a stage four downtrend on this weekly time frame it's in a longer term downtrend where it finds a bottom or support is anyone's guess from here but there's no point in being a buyer of these stocks as they're in free falls you don't want to be saying well it's a good company it'll come back and that sort of thing you don't know how long it will take to come back if you take a look at you know Cisco systems for instance Cisco is still well off I, I mean 80 you know 80 plus was its high it's 70 plus percent off of its highs from 2000 and you'll find you know same thing people will tell you Cisco's a good company let me follow up on a couple stocks I mentioned uh, last week this NVAX did get going a little bit in here it's got a big short position in it I don't have a position I actually got shaken out of my calls I think I told you I had calls I got tired of it over on this day of course the day before it rallied but um, it, it's just a stock that's not comfortable to me because it's this biotech it has a big short position in a great chart, but I can't get it out of my mind that these biotechs fail so often. Uh, so I got shaken out of it. If you're still in the stock, I'd say your worst case stop would go 560. This INFN I had mentioned last week as well, that if it could get back above these recent highs, that it, I think it has the ability to continue to move higher. I still believe that's the case. This INFN has a great looking longer term chart, has some good fundamentals from what I read the headlines. And I think that next week getting back above this little band of resistance between 1440 to 1450, that's what it's going to take to get this uh, stock going back to the upside. Hope you had a good week. And uh, uh, let me just mention quickly that uh, uh, it's free shipping on the technical analysis using multiple time frames book through next Monday. Uh, so uh, technicalanalysisbook.com to, to uh, take advantage of that. Thanks.